our lovely boys and girls, you are very welcome to our fifth session for lesson five. And I'm very sure that you looked at so many pertinent issues with, about slave trade with Teacher Mubala, and I'm sure you understood him. But then today, we want to look at abolition of slave trade. We want to look at abolition of slave trade. Now, the word abolition comes from the word abolish. That means to stop something from happening or to bring something to an end. Now, it was very necessary to bring slavery to an end because it was evil, it was harsh, it was cruel and very destructive. Unfortunately, it was not very easy to bring slavery to an end. Look here, the abolition movement started in 1822 and ended in 1919. 1919. This means the abolition spent more than 95 years to bring slave trade to an end. Now, we want to look at reasons why it was not easy or it was difficult to bring slave trade to an end. Let's write that somewhere in down. Reasons why it was difficult. Why it was difficult to bring slave trade to an end. Why was it so difficult for abolitionists to bring this destructive trade to an end? One, African chiefs and kings supported slave trade. We're going to write it down. African chiefs and kings supported slave trade. African chiefs and the kings supported slave trade. Supported slave trade. Or we can even say African chiefs and kings supported it. Now, boys and girls, these African chiefs and kings served as catalysts to slave trade. In a way that they sold their own disobedient servants to slave dealers. They needed slaves for battery. They would exchange these slaves for other valuable items like guns, gunpowder, and many others. Therefore, African chiefs and kings supported it because it was profitable. It was the source of livelihood. Are, and hence, it was very difficult to bring slavery to an end because African chiefs and kings supported it. Number two, slave trade had covered a wider area. Let's write it down. Slave trade had covered a wider area. Or we can say it covered a wider area. It covered a wider area. You know, Africa was full of notorious slave, slave dealers, like the Tip Chiefs, the Abusan, the Missouri, and so many others. And also, there were so many slave groups all over Africa, hence, making it very difficult to bring slave trade to an end. The other reason, boys and girls, is that. Slave traders were well armed. Slave traders were well armed. So our point three is slave traders, or you can call them slave dealers. Slave traders were well armed. Were well armed. Like, I mean, these uh, slave dealers, like Chip Chip, were well armed. Their chips had guns. And they would easily fight against abolitionists or people who try to stop slave trade. So they would exchange bullets, making it so difficult to bring slave trade to an end. However, there were so many groups of people that helped to stop slave trade in Africa. 
Now, our next apprehending is we want to look at groups of people that helped to bring slave trade to an end. So, our heading is groups of people groups of people that helped to abolish because already have the word abolition that helped to abolish slave trade in Africa of course boys and girls there were very various groups of people that helped us to stop slave trade in Africa. The very first group of people that helped us to stop slave trade were the explorers. We had explorers. Of course, explorers were people who came to study the physical features of Africa. Boys and girls, these explorers served as eyewitnesses to slave trade horrors. So, they actually advocated their own government to come and colonize Africa because they thought it was the best way to stop slave trade and develop Africa. And number two, these explorers also helped to preach and help to write articles on newspapers condemning slave trade. For example, Dr. David Livingstone, one of the, one of the uh, prominent explorers in Africa, he wrote so many articles on different newspapers condemning slave trade in Africa. Another group, boys and girls, we had Christian missionaries. So missionaries also helped us to stop slave trade in Africa. So missionaries, is, is it another group? So these Christian missionaries also helped to preach against slave trade in Africa. So for them, they preached against the horrors, the evils, of slavery and actually they tried so much to discourage Africans from getting involved or engaged in this destructive trade. Another group we had colonialists. We had colonialists. These colonial masters also played a very important role towards the abolition movement. One, they developed railway systems or railway networks that enabled Africans to use trains instead of slaves for transporting their goods. And also the rail lines that colonists constructed is the movement of unsilvered troops or soldiers. Another group, boys and girls, we had the humanitarians. Humanitarians. Right now, the humanitarians. Humanitarians are also called activists. They are also called activists. Activists. So these are people who had love for humanity. They are people who have great love for humanity. So many of them helped to fight against slavery in Africa. For example, Abraham Lincoln, the president of America in the year 1861. We had Henry Thornton. We had the Gravel Shah, we had Adam Smith, we had William Liverpool, and so many others. They helped us to fight against slavery in Africa. Uh, boys and girls, we can also talk about you. Uh, yeah, these are the groups of people that helped us to fight against slavery in Africa. Uh, I want us to go to the spending of humanitarians. Uh, before this A is letter I. So, humanitarians. Humanitarians. Call them activists. Now, we want to look at methods that these groups of people used to abolish slavery in Africa. What, I mean, how did they, how were they able to bring slavery to an end? Now, we want to look at the methods. Methods. used to bring slavery to an end or to abolish slavery methods used to abolish slavery in Africa
So there were so many mess up that these uh, groups of people are uh, applied to bring slavery to an end. One of them was signing treaties. Signing treaties or agreements. And we shall look at that in court. So what do we say? Signing treaties. You can say treaties or agreements. It was a method of abolishing slavery in Africa. Agreements. The other method both and girls was developing railway systems or developing railway network. So we can say developing railway network. Developing railway network. We shall look at how these methods were used to bring slavery to an end. The other method, boys and girls, is using Christian missionaries or just using missionaries. Using missionaries. The other method is using force. So this uh, groups of people are also forced to use force in order to bring slavery to an end. So we can say using military force. Using military force. So these are the methods that were used to bring slavery to an end. Now we want to look at how each of these methods were used to bring slavery to an end. How each of these methods were used Bring slavery to an end. Are we together? Yes. Our question is how were the following methods? How were the following methods? How were the following methods used to bring slavery to an end? So we, were, we, were, we want to look at how these methods were used to bring slavery to an end. So our question is, how were the following methods used to bring slavery to an end? And our first method was developing railway system. Developing railway system. Developing railway system. How was this used to bring slavery to an end? Then a question mark here goes and girls, don't forget it. Uh, uh, you learn this in physics that uh, the development of railway system in Africa helped to bring slavery to an end. How? One, trains were used for carrying goods instead of slaves. Number two, uh, it also, I mean, railway system also eased. The movement of unslaved traders. It is the movement of unslaved traders. You want to answer this by yourself. I'm giving the answer to how to write it down. What we are saying, the development of railway system enabled people to use trains for transporting goods instead of slaves. Number two, the development of railway system eased the movement of unslaved traders. Eased. Making it easy. So uh, Brazil made the movement of unslaved troops or soldiers very easy. Now we also want to look at another method. How was it used to bring slavery to an end? And that is none other than using missionaries. In Genesis, we say that missionaries played a very important role in a pollution movement. How? One, they preached against slave trade. They preached against the evils of slave trade, called them horrors of slave trade. And then too, they also encouraged their own governments to come and colonize Africa. They had advocated their own governments to come and colonize Africa because they thought it was the best way to bring slave trade to an end and also develop Africa. Then the other method is using military force. You know, abolitionists were forced to use military force of violence to bring in areas where slave traders or slave dealers 
resisted abolition movement. I want to make that clear. In areas where slave dealers resisted abolition process, abolitionists were forced to use force. Now, their last method is signing treaties. So we're going to touch it up. Signing treaties. This one's quite broad, that's why I prefer to have it last, it's quite broad. So signing treaties. And we say treaties are arguments. Boys and girls, there were basically three examples of treaties that were signed in Africa to bring slave trade to an end. And these treaties were named after the people or personalities that spearheaded their signing. The very first treaty in a, that was signed to bring slavery in Africa was the Muresbury Treaty. Everybody said Muresbury Treaty. Yes. So Muresbury Treaty, we're going to write it down here. One we had, Muresbury Treaty. Muresbury Treaty. So this Muresbury Treaty was the very first and slavery treaty that was signed in the year 1822. So we can say Muresbury Treaty of 1822. I want to make this clear, boys and girls. This was the very first and slavery treaty that was signed to bring slavery to an end in Africa. It was signed between uh, Sultan Said Said. Sultan Said Said. Sultan Said Said. This was the greatest Sultan at the East African coast, was Sultan of Zanzibar and one of the notorious slave leaders. So uh, this Muresbury Treaty was signed between Sultan Said Said and Captain Fairfax Morrisburg. Captain Fairfax Morrisburg. Captain Fairfax, Fairfax, Morrisburg. I remember I told you that these treaties were named after personalities that spearheaded their signing. So Captain Fairfax Morrisburg signed this treaty on behalf of the British government. And then Sultan said he signed on behalf of Africans. Now, I want to make it more clear and I want to repeat after me. The Morrisburg Treaty was signed, or I mean, was the first and slavery treaty that was signed between Sultan Said Said and Captain Fairfax Morrisburg in 1822. You can repeat that I guess. So, what was the effect of this treaty? How did this treaty affect African continent? But remember, this treaty did not mark the eventual. Uh, eventual end of slavery. No. Remember I told you it was not an overnight process. Stopping slavery was not an overnight process. Now, how did this treaty affect Africa? The effect was this treaty barred the Sultan from selling slaves to Europe. Or it stopped Sultan Zaid Zaidi from selling slaves to Europe. You know, Zaid Zaidi was making a lot of gains or profits from slaves by selling them to Europe. But this argument barred them. Barred, spelling barred. It barred or stopped him from selling slaves to Europe. Are we together? Yes. Now, the very second and slavery treaty in Africa was. The Hammer Tone Treaty. We had the Hammer Tone Treaty. The Hammer Tone Treaty. Oh, they were named after personalities that spearheaded their signing. Now, when you talk about the Hammer, remember we had Hammer Tone Winds and the Remit, but this is a treaty. And the name of a person that spared it signing. So the Hamilton Treaty, boys and girls, was the very second and slavery treaty that was signed in Africa in 1845. 
1845. I want to read that. The Hamilton Treaty, you can spell it very well. The Hamilton Treaty was the second anti slavery treaty that was signed in Africa in 1845 between Sultan Said Said of Zanzibar and Colonel Atkins Hamilton. Sultan Said Said, and this time around it was the Captain Fairfax Morris by no. And the British government decided to send another uh, another army official known as Colonel Atkins Hamilton. Colonel Atkins Hamilton. So this is Colonel Atkins Hamilton when he came to Africa, he signed a treaty with Sudan City City. But this treaty still never brought slavery at an end. It never brought slavery at an end. Now, I want to look at how the Hamilton Treaty affected Africa. How did the Hamilton Treaty affect Africa? Uh, boys and girls, when Colonel Hamilton uh, uh, signed a treaty with uh, Sultan Said Said, it actually forced the Sultan not to send slaves outside. Actually, we can say that it is slave, it stopped slaves from being, I mean, it stopped slaves from leaving East Africa. Or no slave was allowed to leave East Africa. One minute was not clear. What was the effect of Hamilton Treaty? No slave was allowed to leave East Africa. Or the Sultan was not allowed to ship slaves outside this territory. That was the effect of the Hamilton Treaty. Now, one look at the very last treaty that was signed in Africa. And this treaty ground is the one that marked the end of slave trade in Africa. And that treaty was also named after the personality that spearheaded its signing. And that treaty was known as, you can tell me, you look at this in this case. Very good. It was the Freely Treaty. Everybody said Freely Treaty. Look at the spelling. Freely Treaty. Freely Treaty. Boys and girls, the Freely Treaty was the third and the last anti-slavery treaty that was signed between, between Sultan Bagash. This time round it wasn't same same, but this time it was Sultan Bagash. Sultan Bagash. Look at the spelling of his name. Bagash. It was signed between Sultan Bagash and Sir Britton Battle Freely. Everybody said Sir Britton Battle Freely. Sir Britton Battle Freely. So we shall say that the Freely Treaty was the third and last anti slavery treaty that was signed between Sultan Bagash and Sir Britain Battle of Freely in 1873. 1873. Now, how did the Freely Treaty of 1873 affect Africa? Or affect the people of Africa. One, no Indian living in East Africa was allowed to own slaves. So don't try this. I'm not going to try this. But when you're making notes, please make sure you write the partner for the important issues. So we are saying that no Indian living in East Africa was allowed to own slaves. Another effect of the Freely Treaty was that it marked the end of slave trade. In Africa. But don't forget, slave trade in East Africa ended in 1919. Moreover, after the First World War. Wow. So we suffered so much as a result of slave trade. However, we want to appreciate the contributions of these missionary groups I and mean, the contributions of these groups of people that helped us end slave trade in Africa. Boys and girls, uh, this marks the end of our lesson.
but please do not forget to come up with these notes. We love you so much. May God bless you.